good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of CHGO Bears After Dark, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. How's it going, everybody? Will DeWitt, Greg Braggs Jr. here for this Monday night edition of the CHGO Bears podcast After Dark. Nicholas Moriano will join us in about a half hour. And of course, Cody DeMondo will join us in about 15 minutes to give us our Monday night football bets this week. But Braggs, man, how's it going? How's your Christmas? Oh, it was great. <clears throat> like I was telling you off air, made that prime rib to perfection, medium rare all day. So we had a, a nice day of spoiling our little four and a half year old who's starting to learn the tricks of the trade to Christmas. Uh, she was picking through her presents and she was like, this one's squishy. It has clothes in it and was like pushing it over to the side. So we got to get a little slicker with our pr- gift wrapping going forward because she's knowing the the ins and outs of the Christmas trade. Picking up on some of those context clues. What was her favorite uh, gift this year? Uh, we got our big old Paw Patrol ramp and then a house, a uh, bluey house, you know. Okay. So those those were the biggest boxes. So, you know, kids determine everything by big or small. So those were the biggest things. So those were her favorite things. We did get her an electric or a robotic, a robot dog. Last year, we got her a robot cat. This year, we got a robot (laughs) dog. So at some point, we're going to have to get her a real dog. But I got to man up and decide what kind of breed because, you know, she's a little allergic. So we got to get one of those hypo allergic, you know, allergenic Mm -hmm. dogs. So she's, you know, not getting this, you know, uh, you know, red around the face and stuff. So can't figure out what kind of dog I want, which is why there wasn't a dog on Christmas. So dad dropped the ball. So the robot just comes in to replace, <laughs> at least for now. That makes, yes. that makes sense. You can't, hopefully not allergic to robotics, but uh, I wish <laughs> you luck on that journey. I know I'm allergic to animals and I've done some of my research, but I think a pet's still pretty far away from us, but I understand the importance of it and enjoy this phase, Greg. I know I remember when uh, my oldest was really into Paw Patrol and now it's like you mention it and he just like, you no, like that's baby <laughs> stuff. And like we trolled him last year. We got him for his birthday, like uh, a one random balloon from Party City of Paw Patrol. And we brought that in the house and oh, he did not like that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know when that day will come. Maybe soon. She certainly switches. You know, every year it seems like it changes a little bit, but she's been on the Paw Patrol kick for a couple of years. Joe Joe Matuzak in the chat, he's she, he suggests get Addie a tortoise. <laughs> my uh, my wife had a turtle growing up. I think I think the turtle's name was Lucky, if I'm correct. She's upstairs laying on the couch. Um, so turtles do run in the family, you know. So maybe maybe that is not a bad thing. But yeah, love Dave. You know, no uh, no Bulls pregame. CHGO Bulls pregame. There will be a CHGO postgame show. So strap it down and hang out with us here and, and let's talk some bears. And then you can get on your Bulls kick here in a little bit. There we go. I needed you, by the way, over the weekend because the big gift for the baby was like a, a toy kitchen. Uh, so he can start cooking around. And it was missing like all these pre built holes inside of it. And so I just, it's still sitting next to me and it's pissing me off. I just kind of glanced <laughs> over and it's like 20% of the way built. And I, <laughs> feel bad he doesn't know any different right he's 13 months old he doesn't know he's missing out but i know he's missing out and you know that as a parent that sucks but i was telling joey right before you hopped on actually greg that earlier today i think he said his first sentence which there you go right awesome that's like the most fun time right there is that first year year and a half when they go from crawling to walking to a few words to sentences uh, the how fast they pick up on things at that point in their life. It's a really fun time to be a parent. So it, it really enjoy. is. Yeah, I think it said I, I think he said I love my dada, which that's what I heard. That's what I told everyone. <laughs> and that's going to be the story for the rest of my life here the mm-hmm. day after Christmas. We have uh, an I love my dada, which you know I would very much uh, appreciate. So let's go from that feel good moment into our weekly vibe check. So I know it's been a couple of days since the Bears played, so we have some time to kind of look at it with some ration, some reason perhaps. And I just want to know as it sits here on Monday, first of all, can we actually start rooting for the Texans now? I've been asking you for a month and I think we can finally get there. We can. Uh, I can't believe it. God. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. that's that. What was, I didn't know. Was there a second question? Yeah. I was going to ask. So how you feeling? What's the vibe? Yeah. The vibe is um, exactly what you're saying. We have a shot at the number one pick. You've been telling me for weeks and I didn't believe you. 
What's crazy is they nearly beat the Chiefs and um, who was the other team that was Dallas? Dallas that they nearly beat right on the goal line at the end of that game, or else the Bears would already have it in their hands. Uh, so now you have Texans playing ja- uh, the Jaguars on the road and then Colts to end the season, or Jaguars at home and then Colts on the road to end the season. I might have to go down to Indy to uh, inspire the troops or something because, I mean, the the Bears, I don't think, have had the number one pick since, like, 1947 or mm-hmm. something. So, you know, uh, what a rare opportunity this would be. Everybody knows what I prefer. I'm not rooting against the Bears. I know some want to try to label that on me. It's not, it's not. It's just what I would prefer. And the Bears, as hard as they try, as we saw this last week, they're likely going to lose the game. So, you know, as much as what I prefer or quote unquote am rooting for, the outcomes at this point are feeling somewhat inevitable. But still two games ago, Lions lost to the Panthers. So I think that lessens the chance of this upcoming week being a trap game for the Lions because a trap game is defined by they're riding a high and come in underestimating a team. I don't think they're going to go to Detroit on New Year's Eve and be underestimating the Bears after getting shellacked against the Carolina Panthers. They're still in the playoff hunt, so they should have a refocused energy. Uh, The last Bears-Lions game was much closer, but the Bears also had a lot of players that were healthier at that time. We had Darnell Mooney and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have those players. So it'll be interesting when the Bears have competed in every game. They made the Bills game close. It was 21-13 to to start the fourth quarter. So I have no doubt this one will be close as well. But at the end of the day, these guys just don't have enough talent to play a full four quarters against good teams. And it is starting to look like Minnesota may be playing for something that last week. We'll get to that point when we get there as far as what the Bears are going to do. But, yeah, that's where all my focus is on that. What what our offseason draft status would be and the health of our team. And uh, Justin Fields came out of the game relatively healthy, but I'm holding my breath in each of these games. So we got past that game without some catastrophic you know, situation happening. We got two more to go potentially, and that's where I look at this. I mean, all the development talk. And we'll get to some of the other players on this team that are just are, are just as important to develop. But uh, I've seen what I need to see from Justin Fields. A million percent. Did you see how Dan Campbell like took that loss? Like, did you see the handshake after the game? No, I didn't. He just walked up there and is like, "Hell of an ass beating. Good job. Congrats!" And just walked off. Like, so like he <laughs> owned it. And honestly, like that's just the kind of guy he is. And I feel like with the Lions having pretty much like their own fate in their hands. Like they, if they have to win out for their chance to make the playoffs and knowing they just got in Dan Campbell's words, their ass is kicked. I feel like they're going to be coming out firing on all cylinders and really playing some meaningful football here on Sunday, which should make it difficult for the bears. And also, as we've mentioned, good for the bears draft status. So I really liked where you took that vibe check. What about Valus? I know you guys got to talk about him a little bit on the post game, but for you and I, personally to get so high in the kid yep. after they drafted him to go through all the trials and you know tribulations to end here where he put together his most complete game as a pro obviously there's a lot more consistency uh we want to see out of him but i still can't help but smile and just be glad that he was able to at least have one of those performances this year because without it man it would have been a long off season of bears fans trying to talk their way like totally moving on from bayless right. after just one year no, it was really positive. I mean, he had some nice returns, um, made some plays downfield, not just sideline to sideline or right. in the backfield, having him actually run some routes. Uh, let's hope he can stack that performance with a couple more to end the year. Then you'll really have something. I mean, this is one game, small sample size, obviously a step in the right direction compared to the the seller, which is where he was standing, you know, as far as his play is concerned. So <clears throat> certainly happy for him. What a throw that was by Justin Fields, yeah. um, you know, kind of throwing him open, not waiting for him to get open, to let it loose. And then for Velas to go and get it, you know, not, you know, just keep, you know, like keep his route vertical. He came across the sideline and went and get it. So that was great. Uh, we got a question in the chat. It's here a from, really good one. 
Okay, we got if the Bears get the first pick, how do you guys feel about a double trade back situation acquiring multiple extra picks by trading back to the Texans first and then trading back from that pick? I mean, all I mean, all bets are off. And that is the beauty <laughs> of having the number one or number two pick. Did they get the number one pick as Adam Hogue brought up in the post-game show? That opens up so many more situations for teams that may want to trade up because if the Texans get the number one pick, they might want to just take the quarterback from Alabama, Bryce Young. And let's say there's five or six teams out there that prefer Bryce Young over any other quarterback. If we have the number one pick, now all of a sudden those teams are like, hey, we can go up and get him. If the Texans are picking there, they can't they can't even consider that as an option, and you don't know how they feel about C.J. Stroud or Will Levis. So it just opens up so many more scenarios for at least one trade back. Now, if there's two tra- a double trade back, we're talking craziness transpiring. At this point, though, I would say, uh, you know, it, it needs to be a king's ransom. But if we're going to trade back, it has to be two, you know, a king's ransom, two first-round picks, three Something that's going to blow your top off because we we know how much this Bears defense needs some pressure on the defensive line. Mm-hmm. So um, passing up on Will Anderson or Jalen Carter, it needs to be for a damn good reason. I want to trade back as much as anybody. In a perfect world, we only trade back one or two spots with the Texans or Lions that trade up. Therefore, we can still draft one of those defensive linemen but we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. But uh, that's kind of where I stand on it. Yeah. I mean, very similar to you. It's I wouldn't trade back for the sake of trading back. If it's too far down, I'd say no after the second one, but if you can go from one to two and two to around maybe four, I'm open to it because then you turn one first round pick to four, five, maybe if depending on how much they're going to give you for that first pick. Plus some other higher end ones, maybe some twos, some threes thrown in there too. So I wouldn't be opposed, but like you, passing up on both of those high end top caliber defensive guys. And like, I think that would almost be, if you trade down once already and then you trade down again and miss out on those guys, like you said, it better be a King's ransom because I feel like we would regret by not having at least one of them here on this defense as much as I would love to, stockpile as many picks as possible. I love this question too. I saw in the chat from love Dave. If the bears get a Christmas gift, what would you give them? <laughs> let's say, let's take off a wide receiver one, because I feel like you would have said that you could correct me if I'm wrong, but the that's number, exactly the number one pick is the gift. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The number that would one be the one thing is the gift. I mean, if the Texans somehow are stupid enough to give that up, that would be the ultimate Christmas gift to me. Come on, Lovey. I guess we're all back to you know rooting for Lovey Smith's success here. It's nothing changes after a decade, Greg. Nothing changes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that to me is the. I mean, do you, what, 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 where would you stand on it? What would be your ultimate Christmas gift? That's a good point. Uh, so, like for me, like I wasn't thinking even draft. I was just thinking like what what I want on this roster, and immediately went to wide receiver one and. I think a lot of people would agree, and that's been like where my focal point has been over the last couple of weeks. But I mean, outside of that, two damn good edge rushers would be is that too much to ask for for one gift? It's like a bundle deal. I don't know, but I just the more I watch these Bears games, the more I just get frustrated with the lack of play from the defensive line. This has been a Bears team throughout my entire lifetime that's had really good defensive lines, and now not having one, I kind of can understand like their importance just a, a little bit more. Because even with a good secondary playing good coverage and making plays on the ball, it's not enough when you can't stop the run and you can't get after quarterbacks. You can score 35 points a game, but then you're giving up 40. Can't have it. So if we're looking, and I know we wanted to kind of keep today like a defensive focus, why not ask for a couple of edge rushers? I think that's a really good question. And Love Dave follows it up with like, doesn't seem to be a wide receiver one available in free agency over the draft. Very good point. I think free agency is a definite no. The draft, let's do some more homework. Let some time pass. We'll figure that out. But it's not going to be like a Marvin Harrison Jr. or anything coming out. No, and, but, speak, for that. but speaking of Ohio State wide receivers, to me, it is JSN, mm-hmm. Jackson Smith Jigba, if I'm not butchering his name there. Uh, to, from what I've seen, 
you know, I'm, he's had some injuries, uh, but the familiarity with Justin Fields, from what I see watching him play, he's got some pretty elite route running abilities. You know, somebody that uh, just kind of technician with his footwork. I, I really like what I see from Jet. Now, you know, the other guys play at TCU and USC. Those are, are teams that I don't watch as much. So maybe it's the bias of seeing Ohio State more than those two. But if they're able to trade back to the Lions pick or the Texans pick at two or three and then add, you know, the Texans, the 11th pick in the draft or the Lions 15th pick in the draft, and that guy is sitting there 11 through 15, I would love for them to stack this wide receiver room up after you take the the defensive line pass rusher. So uh, that's where I stand with that. Yep, nope, totally. I mean, I, I came out with like my five receivers I'm watching and – he was definitely way up there on my list. So I know we're going to be waiting here a minute here for Cody still. Any other just random bear thoughts on the – oh, shoot, Cody, Cody, you're sneaky. Sneaky. What's going that on? Looks, that looks – I know bedhead when I see it, Cody. Mm. You're Couch muted head. and you're muted. But you look beautiful. Mm. No. Mike plugged in. Mike turned on. Mike plug out, plug back in. You know, troubleshooting. It's almost like I've done it a million times. In my I lifetime. know bedhead when I see it. Well, okay? I think that's couch head. Could like be you couch took a nap head. On the couch. Could be. But I know what you head. mean. Yeah. No, and there's nothing wrong with. Hey, naps are healthy. Okay. Let's not. We're not nap shaming here on CHGO Bears After Dark. Naps are healthy. You know, um, I'm taking a nap or two in my day. So, not not nap shaming. I'm just nap observing. There you go. No, naps are the older I get, the more I appreciate ever finding a time to squeeze in one of those, even if it's just 20 minutes. Oh boy, it can change the entire direction of it. But of a the thing here. I've pointed out so many times, and this is where number one, the number one pick, even more so not than number two, to me is just so vital or so would be so amazing for Ryan Poles to go into the offseason because. You know, we see some uh, thoughts about free agency in the chat, and you can then know what you're you want to do in the draft before you even get there, and have a good strategy for free agency, knowing that you get the choice when the draft right. starts. What's up, Cody? Let's see. Let's see. Can you guys can you guys hear me now? Oh yeah. yes, uh, yes, awesome. Uh, Greg, I've been wearing a beanie all day. I haven't been in bed. Okay. However, I have been home all day, so I don't okay. go lay bricks like you. I, I didn't lay bricks today either, but we might get back to it on Wednesday because the weather, the temperature is supposed to get back up to 41. We uh, are, My five-year-old is out, almost five-year-old is just out of control. Like I was telling Will, she's learning the tricks of the trade of Christmas. So she's learning that soft presents that are wrapped are closed, and she's got no interest in opening them. <laughs> And then the other thing she's learning is there is no consequences for her actions because she's been out of control the last five, five, four days and she knows that she's getting her presence anyway. Mm. So it's like this <laughs> fine line of letting her enjoy the beauty of Christmas, but also mm. not letting her fly off the handle. It's it's not easy. But then every time she acts like this, I know it's my fault because she's her father's daughter. <laughs> 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 um how's it going guys are you guys we're betting good. on this game tonight no oh, yeah we're getting you into tell it. me yeah, you tell you me what we're waiting on your advice before we start putting <laughs> the, the hard money down i haven't thrown a hundred right. bucks down on anything until you tell me what to do um okay so i have a parlay for this game a same game parlay and i have a teaser uh i will say that i lean the colts it's at plus three and a half now. I I still lean it just because of that hook. It, it's just I hate it because the Colts are out of it. They're starting Nick Foles tonight, um, mm -hmm. but they're a home underdog. The Chargers, I don't like betting the Chargers when they're favorites. Like, they, 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 they always seem to be a complete letdown when they're favorite. Um, that, you know, I – that said, it, it's tough because, like, again, the Chargers still have something to play for and the Colts don't. Um, and they're coming off blowing, like, the like one of the worst leads of all time. They led, what, 33 to nothing against the Vikings last week. 
and then the Vikings won 36 to 33, something like that, whatever. Um, but if I were to bet this game just one single play, I lean the Colts just because they're at home. And you know how Nick Foles is, man. Like, we, we saw him ourselves. The first game that he come, came out there, he comes out there and slings it, man. Like, I, I one of the problems they had with Matt Ryan is they had the, they, he couldn't throw the ball deep down the field because he's old now and stuff. Um, I think that they're going to try and do that a little bit more with Foles. Um, Jonathan Taylor out, but they still run the ball pretty well. I don't know. Like, I lean it. I'm not going to play it, but that's what I lean. Um, but with my teaser, I'm uh, doing a seven-point teaser. comes out to minus 140. It's not the greatest odds, but, you know, Greg, if you want to put $100 on it, you can make decent money back. Um, so, like I said, seven-point teasers. I'm teasing the Chargers down to plus three and a half. Uh, again, they're three and a half point favorites, so seven point teaser down to it goes down to plus three and a half. So I'm giving them the hook um, as an underdog, and then the I'm taking the under, uh, which increases it from 44 and a half to 51 and a half. Uh, again, seven point teaser, which is at minus 140. Again, not the greatest odds, but that's the one I I feel comfortable. I feel more comfortable with that than I do just playing the Colts or the Chargers, just because these teams are so unpredictable. I like the under just because I think the Colts are going to try and run the ball a lot. Um, but we'll see. I think time of possession is really going to be a big factor into if this under, if, if it goes under. Plus, on primetime, uh, again, primetime games, the under has been very profitable this year. So I feel like the 51.5 is pretty safe considering the the, the regular total is 44.5. And, um, and again, I, 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 think the, I think the Chargers – win this game outright uh but i i just i don't know so giving me that half point um with the colt as the chargers as the as an underdog there uh is very helpful to, in my opinion um and then my parlay it's pretty simple um i'm taking austin eckler five plus receptions uh austin eckler to score a touchdown and the chargers to win comes out to Plus three twelve if you use one of those DraftKings boosts. Uh, okay. it's just a it's just a three leg parlay and it's only plus three twelve. But um, you know, I feel like this I've taken the receptions on Eckler because I you, you know the Colts are really good defending the run, so I feel like the Chargers are gonna be throwing the ball all night. Um so if they're gonna get Eckler involved, he's gonna be, you know, catching balls. Um and then I I, I, I think that he will be scoring one way or another uh, at some point in that game. He's been one of the best running backs in the league all year. Um, and then Chargers money line. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I That's the only thing. that Honestly, that's the one leg on it that I'm like, eh, I don't know if it's going to happen, but we're going to try. So, yeah, I, I say every week on Monday Night Football, these games stink. This game stinks once again. Maybe not as bad as some of the ones in previous weeks, but um, the Chargers have something to play here. How bad the Monday and Thursday night matches every are. week, every, every week, week man, the bad. entire season. <laughs> it used to just be games. Thursday night we'd complain about. It. <laughs> yeah, now it's yes. like almost every prime time game. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how even, that's possible. Y- even yesterday's games on Christmas Day were awful. <laughs> they were I mean, awful. Yeah. you had Cardinals and Buccaneers on Sunday night. And I get it. Like, both those teams coming in the year, I guess they had some expectations, especially the Buccaneers, and they've just been so brutal to watch all year. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess it shows how much parity there is in the NFL because it's hard to predict, like, what are going to be the best games. Right. But, man, they should be flexing a lot of these games out on primetime, like, <laughs> weeks in advance, man, like – I don't know why they haven't really done that this this year at all. I feel like they haven't at least. Well, so. the only games they can flex are Sunday night games. You can't flex Thursday mm-hmm. night games or Monday night games. So Fair. they they did fl- flex next week Sunday night for Steelers Ravens. Um, they mm-hmm. typically only flex by the end of the year because that's when playoff implications start to come into play. But they can't flex Thursday and Monday night games. Unfortunately, I wish they could. <laughs> yeah. So Albert in the chat has a good point. At least next Monday we get Bills Bengals. Ooh. Okay. Finally. So, 
That'll be that'll be a good one. I can't. I, I it's haven't not worth all the struggles. It's not. Yeah. Don't jinx it, Albert. Something yeah, could happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just make sure no one gets hurt. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? Something. Who knows? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I think you know as far as props, I. I was trying to take Mike Williams under on receptions just because I don't think the Colts are going to let the Chargers to make make a lot of deep passes and he's more of like a deep route guy, but they took that prop off DraftKings. So hmm. uh, unless you already made it, uh, or if they put it back on there in the next few minutes, but yeah, I, I like that. But it, I, you know, if you take uh, Eckler as a single bet on the receptions, it's like minus one forty five. So that's why I did the parlay. So. Yeah. Anyway. Straightforward enough. No, it makes a lot of sense to me. Anything uh, you wanted to add here, Greg, either on your own or just what Cody was able to lay down for us before we send him off back to his nap? No, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have anything betting-wise. Appreciate lean on Cody's expertise for that. I mean, I will say um, to one of my buddy on Twitter's points, it's been feeding me a lot of good information about the Tankathon is that we should be rooting for – the Chargers in this game um, to beat the Colts, or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe it was, I'll have to check with this. Let me do my research before I start talking out of my my, my <laughs> butt here, like I yeah. like to do. But there is tanking implications because you mentioned the Arizona game last night, and had they won, the Bears would have locked a at least a top three pick in. Had the they just won, and the Bears would still be allowed to win one more game. They're up sixteen to six. As soon as I realize this, now I start watching the game all intently. This game that, like you said, is boring and why is it even on? And then I start like really wanting Arizona to win. As soon as that happens, uh, Tom Brady ruins my life and I'm like pissed off at the end. I'm like, why did I even get emotionally invested in this? Speaking speaking of the Bears, and here, here this is more gambling stuff, but I had a parlay with Fields and the rushing yards yesterday. And it was the first game of the year where he really didn't do any of it. And I fully expected it considering it was cold and windy and they, they, he didn't do it. Yeah. I I didn't watch a ton of the game. Like where I I was, I, uh, they had red zone on at my girlfriend's parents' house. So we were, it was going, you know how red zone works. It's just going back and forth and everything. So I didn't get to watch the game in full. Um, but I, Whenever I, you know, checked the sc- the stat sheet after the game, I was like, 11 yards? What is this? <laughs> like, yeah, my, I mean, my parlay he, was never my, – my parlay never had a chance. <laughs> he barely tried to take off and run. At one point, he rolled out of the pocket, had a guy one-on-one, and nothing yeah. but, you know, field behind his defender, and he threw it out of bounds. And I think mm-hmm. that was a big tell that they're basically done putting him at risk as much as they can, uh, limit the hits he's taking – as we end the season here, because the week prior I was telling Adam how surprised I was. they set the over under on rushing yards at like 80 or 81. Right. And he passed yeah. it because he had the long run. But mm-hmm. aside from that, it was like, I just don't, I think you should start taking the under on these rushing under. yards. It's a better, it's a better bet than the over mm-hmm. because of how precautious they need to be. And now to my, my, who we are rooting for, for the tankathon tonight it's the Chargers because if they win, they lock up a playoff spot and they're not catching Kansas City in the division. And it could mean they rest week 18 versus a rejuvenated Denver Broncos team that just fired mm-hmm. their head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. Mm-hmm. So then maybe the Broncos can beat a second string Chargers team and give us more leeway if the Bears are stupid enough to win one of these last two games. Quickly, um, though, devil's advocate would be you want Indy to – well, wait, you said Indy to lose tonight? Yes, Chargers. Oh, then you're good. So then an extra wrinkle in it would be that could potentially raise their draft stock because they're starting at five, and the higher they are, they're another quarterback needy team that you trade up, and yep. they want to trade up with the Bears. You don't drop that far back. They're not so that I think far there's back. a lot of good reasons then tonight um, to root for the Chargers. Um, shout out to at it me who this and shout out to Will <laughs> DeWitt who's been putting out his weekly tank who to watch tankathon articles and the research done in these are not easy because there's so many different variables you have to consider and it gets very confusing as we get down to the final week it gets a little more easy to understand. 
but shout out to you guys for doing the hard research while I just sit around and lean on that. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Cody, I appreciate your time too. Hopping on. It seems like you have one more point you want to make. One, Go ahead. One more thing, not even related to tonight's game, but I was on DraftKings today and I'll admit I've been watching and scrolling on social media and everyone talking about Green Bay today. You can get Green Bay to make the playoffs at plus 175. And I think it's a like I like based off like history and mm-hmm how the sports gods hate me, like, I kind of want to take it. Because, like, they're going to play Minnesota next week, who we all know has just been, like, scathing by, like, by by a thread. You know what I mean? And then I think they got Detroit after that. Yep. Yeah, Detroit had such a huge letdown last – I finally bet on the Lions on Sunday, and they get pounded by the Panthers. And I, I don't know. Like, I feel – like, I know the Packers need some help. But at plus one seventy five to make the playoffs, like that's not a that's not a bad a bad bet in my opinion. Like <laughs> it's the fi- if, it, if it gets to that final game and it's Lions or Packers, whoever wins gets in. Yeah. You feel like that's the final test for Detroit to prove that they're no mm-hmm. longer Detroit. Like, right. You know, it's yeah. almost like when the Cubs. I know it's World <laughs> Series and making the playoffs are two different stratospheres, but. I always felt like in that moment when we Rajay Davis tied the game, they had the game on Marquee Network last night. It was like our final test, like in Indiana Jones in the last crusade. It was like the <laughs> penitent man shall pass. And yeah. there it is. We have our final test to walk across mm-hmm. the, the invisible bridge. And then I think that's going to be Detroit's final test. And, and I'm with you. I'm, I'm going Rodgers because Detroit is always Detroit until they're no longer Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Again, they need. I think they need some other teams to lose too. But I, they got past the big game. Like I, I thought if they could beat the Dolphins, which they did, that they, you know, they could easily win out. And I, we've just seen it too many damn times, man. Like I, I at plus one seventy five, get it now because it's only going to get lower, like the odds are only get lower, right. you know, especially if they win, if they beat the Vikings this week, you know what I mean? And if they lose, then, well, you lost some money, but, hey, you got to see them lose, you know what I mean? This win, is, win. I, this is betting with your heart and betting, you know, to make some money at the same time. I thought, you know, as Bears fans, we got to, you know, there's not much left for the team this year outside of watching fields and just counting down the days to free agency in the draft. So, you know. That's that's my my last two cents. There we go. Yeah, I'm about to put those dates in my phone actually, so I can start knowing exactly <laughs> how many days to both those big miles. Heck, heck, the NFL Combine coming up really yeah. excites me here too to kind of get that thing all started. But Cody, thanks again uh, for hopping on. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you around. And while yeah. you're exiting here, I'm gonna let everyone know about Shady Rays. And Greg, get ready. We're a little bit different order this week, so. Uh, cornholes coming up next. Just making sure. Oh, I'm ready. You're I'm ready. ready. All right. I should have known better. I should yep. have known better. You're right. You know, Mark may forget to read the notion sometimes, but I'm always on. No, I'm kidding, Mark. I love you. <laughs> if you're watching, I love you. All right. So Shady Rays, <laughs> one of my favorite uh, partners here at CHGO because they just never understood why sunglasses were just so expensive. So they set out to change it. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses this winter because our friends at shady rays have you covered shady rays are premium polarized shades they feature world-class optical clarity substantial durability and uh, styles catered everyone and every lifestyle and the best part about them is they have an insane protection program and all of eyewear which is lost and broken replacements if you lose or somehow break these durable shades on day one they told us that they'll send you a brand new pair no questions asked i've had to use this program you're repping it over there love it by the way nice couple of pairs of shade rays i have the same ones that you have on top there the the wood looking ones very classy there i'm gonna have to block you i'm gonna keep laughing throughout this entire read (laughs) uh so uh, again one other thing i want to highlight about shady rays that i just really truly do appreciate is the fact that they do donate uh 10 meals to fight hunger in america with every single order place and they have donated over 20 million meals to date so for our listeners shady rays have uh their Deepest deal of the season. Use code CHGO for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. That's buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for as low as $54. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all of their newest and best shades. That's right. Shady Rays. A solid company with some solid shades. Mm. Yes, I was ready. 
before this switch up tried pulling a curveball on me, but I'm always ready to hit it. Couldn't hit the curveball in Little League, but I could you hit, it hit this one in the majors. Imagine <laughs> that. And uh, you know, you want to get major league with your cornhole boards, you need to go to Chi Town Custom Cornhole, the number one cornhole provider for Chicagoland and Illinois since 2007. Their signature box style design can be digitally printed, covered in vinyl, and painted. Their cornhole boards come with built-in drink holders recessed in on the back, LEDs that light up the hole, an exterior handle and handles for easy carrying, and handcrafted scorekeepers. Veteran-owned and operated, they can ship anywhere and offer local pickups. Specializing in corporate designs for your company's next marketing or social event, wedding gifts and gifts for all occasions, and especially for tailgaters and backyard barbecues. So go check out their website, chitowncornhole.com, and make sure to follow them on Instagram at Chitown Custom Cornhole Boards. If you forgot somebody for their Christmas gift, you can. There, it's never too late to send someone a nice gift. Unexpected gift at an unexpected time is one of my mottos I live by in life. Go get someone some Chi Town Custom Cornhole Boards, and they'll be very happy and forgive you for forgetting them on Christmas. I was really surprised he didn't just like whip out like a couple of boards to throw on the screen at the same time. Just kind of like <laughs> with the sunglasses. It would have been intense holding up. A... Yes, it would have been. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I believe Nicholas Moriano is here to join us because I'm excited to hear what went down at Hallis Hall today. Look at those shady raids, uh, raids all over the place besides mine because mine are sitting up in Chicago, I bet. They're they're probably there, Will, but uh, great. Like I can't actually see the screen with these on. It's kind of funny. They're so yeah, polarized. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so good you at like their turn job. Your head a little bit. Exactly. You got to have a little. What an there. endorsement. But that just means, yeah, like I can't even see the screen. So as cool as these look, I'm gonna put these off to the side here. But yeah, you guys, um, how's it going? I know there's uh, you know, I was hearing a little bit about the the prop bets. I just want to give what I bet on tonight real quickly here. Yeah. Even though probably not the best person to take advice here, did a seven leg parlay. Shouldn't have, I don't know why I keep doing this to be completely honest, <laughs> but here you go. You want to make some money. We're all going to make money here on this parlay. You have Austin Eckler, anytime touchdown score. I have over 229 and a half for Justin Herbert passing yards. And I'm feeling the Nick Foles energy for some reason. I don't know what it is. They just need some kind of spark. 220 plus passing yards. Am I a little crazy? Maybe, but he's going to do it. Deion Jackson, alternate rushing yards, 30 plus. Austin Eckler, 40 plus rushing yards. Also have the over on Michael Pittman receiving yards at 49 and a half. And then over 44 and a half for Mike Williams receiving yards. Just pencil it in, book it down. What I do? I did a boost there. $10 bet gets me 130. I'm going to have 130 more dollars by the end of the night. This is great. After this podcast, be sitting perfect right now you can take us out to dinner i can where do you guys want to go <laughs> hmm. well we have to start saving up for our dinner in indy in february oh yeah oh man the the, the cocktail sauce the shrimp i can't I, it's an experience and elmo's some elmo's yes. cocktail mm-hmm. sauce yes. and That'll i love it too now this is up real yes. quick yes it does <laughs> well the Holy. thing is i was scared of it at first the first time i was like nervous when i first tried right, it well, everybody now warns like, you about how uh-huh. intense it is and now and it, I, I crave it. I I almost bought mm-hmm. some online the other day. You could buy the, the same Elmo's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I can buy it at the store like in town. And next time oh, I see you, you I'll pick gro- up a bottle. You can probably and get it at a grocery store near you, Nick. They got I, it. I have to look because I, I crave that stuff now. It's you so know, weird. And that's the thing. Once it. you start to feel like you're comfortable with it, then you get that's a little probably. overzealous with the dip. And then you then you <laughs> shoot over your skis a little. And then before you know it, your eyes are watering. Oh, exactly. but I love it. I love the fire in the nose that it goes away in like 10 seconds, but it's the most intense kind of exhilarating 10 seconds ever. But that's what I would use the money for, Nick. Save up for that because I know I've already been dreaming of going back once the combine rolls back around. But what's up? Anything we should know from how is today? Yeah, well, let's, let's start here. here because love Dave is in the chat and he was worried sick about you. He's like, okay. what's up? Are you is Nick jumping on the stream soon? I mean, this guy was desperate. For some <laughs> Nick Moriano. He is here, love Dave. Have no I'm fear. I'm here. I made it back. I made it back. But yeah, there was a lot going on at Hallis Hall, just uh, press conferences. But let, let's start with uh, Matt Eberflus. And I think there was questions. I know the guys, 
Mark and Adam talked about it earlier on today's show about shutting Justin Fields down. Absolutely not, according to Matt Eberflus. That's never been in consideration. And the main reason why is like they have to get better. That's what, according to Matt Eberflus, wants to see where the team can improve. And the last two games matter because they're against divisional opponents. So it's important to see how the team competes ultimately. And yes, Justin Fields is still dealing with that left shoulder injury. He couldn't put weight on his foot at the end of the game, uh, you know, when they were playing the Bills. But he was on the sideline throwing some passes there. But ultimately, Justin Fields is good to go, and he's going to play the final two two games here. And I actually wrote an article on LCHGO what he can benefit from being in these last two games. So you can go check that out. But uh, for at least these last two games, you guys, we have QB1, which makes it, you know, for watching the game a lot more exciting than watching – you know, some of these backup quarterbacks, but there also mm-hmm. is obviously the risk of injury. So that's how Iberflus is kind of approaching this. Uh, kind of going a little bit over to the offensive line, there was a, a fluctuation of guys that went in and out throughout the game, but there was no Alex Leatherwood, or he had one snap, I think it was, in the game against the the Buffalo Bills. But what Iberflus says that he worked inside before, but he, he was playing at that right guard, and at that left guard position, I know that Dieter came in at some point, so they were kind of mixing guys around. And the Bears just really liked Riley Reef at at the right tackle spot, and that's why you only saw Alex Leatherwood for one snap. So I'll bring the I'll pose the question here: Can can Alex Leatherwood play? Because if he right. couldn't, you know, like make it onto the field when he was somewhat in a rotation with Riley Reef, and you, you saw the dip down in snaps. I think that at this point is maybe, you know, in the consider you have to consider it at this point. Obviously, the the Raiders moved on from Leatherwood after a year of first round draft pick, and now still trying to find his way onto the line. But it, I have it is trouble a weird. trusting Eberflus here. I think it's just his honor system, the way he makes players earn it. You've seen this earlier in the year when he talks about well, it's about how they earn it in practice. We saw that with Tevin Jenkins earlier in the year when they were rotating him at guard, and there's, mm-hmm. he's saying, well, it's about how you do on Wednesday practice is why he isn't starting. Well, then once he finally gets the permanent, he's the best offensive lineman on the field, whether or not there is a disconnect with the coaching staff. He, talent-wise, is the best on the field. So I, I don't think it has anything to do with Leatherwood not play. I think it's about him still being fresh to this team, coming off mono and everything else. And they have a system with how you get on the field and they don't deter from that as a coaching staff. And that's where Ryan Poles has to interject and come down there and go, look, coach, I know you're trying to win. And I know we want to protect Justin Fields. And I get that's a big dynamic for who you're going to put on your front five because you're not going to just risk Justin life and limb. But at the same time, if I'm Ryan Poles, I'm going down there and I'm going, look, we brought this guy in. We're only going to be able to understand so much about a guy in the off season when they're in shells and shorts. This is our last chance to get a fair look at him. And I would, I would be emphasizing to coach Eberflus that we got to get him out there more than one snap. That's ridiculous to me. And if you go off of how they handled Jenkins early in the year, his philosophy doesn't always hold too much water to me when it comes to that, because to me, you got to get your talent on the field and see what they got. Yeah, maybe a a reason to be optimistic that we might see Leatherwood again playing more snaps this season. I just look on the other side of the line. Angelo Blackson was a healthy scratch, and he said a lot to do with how they how he practiced. And you saw more Mm -hmm. of Armand Watts and those kind of guys. So, um, but he he left the door open, like, well, you know, uh, uh, Angelo Blackson can come back and still play, right? So it's like how they practice. But going to your point, Greg, there's a lot of emphasis put on that. Whether that's right or wrong, I mean, that's up. That's what this coaching staff's here to do, but yep. you might as well see what Leatherwood can do. Two games left. If anything, you're at least going to have a better evaluation of him. You just don't want to be at the expense of Justin Fields. That's kind of like the whole dynamic that I think they're trying to figure and out. To Mark Carmen's point, like he said today on today's show at noon with uh, Corey Wooten and Adam Hope, said that's another reason why it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if Justin didn't play. For those that don't want to mm. see, well, then you can try some different things out. With guys like, you know, I'm seeing Dieter Island suggest in the chat, Jatir Carter, Alex Leatherwood, all these guys that you may see as a risk to put in front of Justin Fields. Well, if you got Peterman out there, he can just deal with it. <laughs> and there's <laughs> less of a risk with your franchise. I mean, that's I think it's smart, but I, I doubt we see it. 
Yeah, make uh, Peterman the, the punching bag for a little bit. It, it, it you know, works out for Justin. Take your Jones legs, forever. Nathan. We're sorry, but we love you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, real quickly, a couple uh, other things that Aberflus talked about. I asked him uh, if the Bills, what they did to really shut down Justin Fields and his rushing tag, only having 11 yards, the lowest total on the season for him. And he said a couple of things. They had a couple of spies on him especially in the passing game. It ranged from linebackers to safeties, all keeping eyes on Justin Fields. Um, but they just ultimately had a really good game plan, you guys. And going back to this matchup with the Bills, Leslie Frazier has been the defensive coordinator since 2017. That is a well-coached defense. No mm -hmm. matter new players coming in, since 2017, that has been imprinted, implemented there. So coming into this matchup, it was a bunch of first-year Head coaches, coordinators going up against a very experienced Bills coaching staff. So they really had the upper hand in that one. And ultimately, that's what happened with Justin Fields not having, you know, as much of an impact on the ground as we've usually seen him and accustomed to doing. And, you know, I think in that game, I, I expect him to do a little bit more considering the weather conditions. But credit to the Buffalo Bills and what they were able to do in that one. We also heard from Nicholas Morrow for about the fifth time in. God knows how many times I think they're just honestly running out of guys to be completely honest. But I, I like Nicholas Morrow. He, he always, uh, you know, answers truthfully, but he was asked right off the bat, why was really the run defense so bad, you guys? And the main thing he kept going to was the gaps, the gaps, the, the gap integrity was bad, just mm -hmm. didn't fit the right gaps. And you just need to be better at the first and second level at fitting those gaps. And it's like fair to question, like you're at week 16, our guys just not figuring out what did the Buffalo Bills do something to have you all confused and where you need to be. But that's really what ultimately happened with the gap integrity being bad and why they couldn't stop the run to save their lives on Saturday. Uh, but he's still uh, one positive about the defense to kind of go the other direction here. Young secondary. And we're going to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. later in this show. He credits that coaching staff who's been working explicitly with the secondary um, they're playing with great effort collectively. Whoever's out there, we've been rotating guys out there and just taking the ball away. And he had a lot of good things to say about Jaquan Brisker. And he said he thinks that he understands what it takes and he thinks he wants to be that guy, that leader, and wants that that moment really. And the moment's not too big for him. So uh, I think that's just positive, a positive outlook for a player that's been very productive in his first year in the NFL with Jaquan Brisker. And then – the last guy to speak to kind of wrap up the house hall updates, Braxton Jones, who, you know, since he's gotten here, you guys, it's just been a pleasure to just listen to, to really hear what he has to say, even being, you know, a fifth round draft pick. But I really liked a couple of the quotes he had in this press conference, how he measures his play. And I think this will, you know, be good for Bears fans ears here. I really take a personal in keeping Justin clean. Don't we all, you guys? That's that's what you want to mm -hmm. hear your offensive linemen say. I think that's right. the biggest thing for me. If he's clean and the runner's clean and we're making good strides as an offense, that's what he, how he looks at his play. If he's doing that, that's how you know he's doing a good job. But he wants to also be that guy, that cornerstone for this organization. He's really looking forward to, to putting in the work this offseason, and he recognizes exactly what he needs to do. He said as the game goes on, he was noticing that his technique can be better. So he noticed that when, as the game kind of progressing, like he's popping up a little more, he's playing with a high pad level. So he's already diagnosing that he's wants to attack that in the off season. But this quote, again, another good one from Braxton Jones. I feel like I should get better as the game goes on, not get worse in technique and stuff like that. So all the good things said by Braxton Jones, again, a fifth round draft pick, listening to him talk, you would think he's been in the league for, you know, three to four years, just knowing exactly what to say. But I feel like when he says things, he's honest with it too. So um, mm -hmm. that's kind of like your, your house hall update, who we got to hear from. And yeah, so that's about it. All right. No, I like it. Pretty straightforward. Not yeah. an earth shattering Monday at house hall after Christmas, after a bill's loss. I'm not surprised. I like Braxton. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think maybe for the mo biggest reason, just in his first year alone, maybe it's because Sam Mustafer has been such a lightning rod on the offensive line. It seems like Bears fans do hone in on one guy used to be Charles Leno for years. Um, but you just don't hear too much about Braxton. You know, he's as quiet a left tackle rookie, le you know, mm -hmm. rookie fifth round pick as you come across. There's very few times that his name gets brought up on the telecast. 
And, you know, maybe, you know, I see, you know, in the chat, Joe Matuzak saying, well, he lacks the temper, sharpen and power. You know, I think as a rookie left tackle, the fact that you're not the problem is a huge, you know, case of how well he's played so far this year. You're not hearing his name brought up in a negative light on the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe going forward, he needs to not just be the guy that's not seen and not heard, but also the guy that you feel his presence a little more, but, you know, to, you know, mold into this role as a fifth round rookie left tackle, I think is he's done a tremendous job. Yeah. He has plenty of time to continue growing into a larger role. And uh, like you said, pretty good results here as a rookie. All right. So we're going to share a couple messages real quick. And then once we get back from the, from those, we're going to do some free agency scouting and talk about this bears, young promising secondary, uh, but real quickly, the fans, the tradition, the glory. There's nothing more thrilling than college football. It's bowl season, and the action is far from over. My go-to for betting is DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. Of course, everyone is looking forward to that national championship game once we get through the college football playoffs. And right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet on a college football team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. Plus, everyone can combine multiple bets for a bigger payout with DraftKings Same Game Parlays, one of Nicholas Moriano's favorite things to do. And, of course, I love using this app. It's super simple, seamless. You can check all the upcoming games, make some picks, own your own Same Game Parlay by tweaking it exactly how you like it and much more. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code CHGO. And new customers, when you place a $5 pregame money line bet on a college football team to win, and get $150 if your team does. That's the code CHGO, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Greg, I know you see this uh, this comment here from Jonathan about the bricks. That's that's all you, man. You've, you've started a movement here brick by brick. So <laughs> you are, you're awesome, first of all. But, uh, wow. That, that's incredible. That is you got incredible. a brick for Christmas. Congratulations. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, you just heard about DraftKings. I have to tell everybody about FOCO and Chicago. You've already got the best coverage for your favorite teams. So get fitted out in the best sports gear around. FOCO's got you covered from Soldier Field to the front room, north or south side with hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leader in sports merch and collectibles, FOCO. Looking for the perfect gift for the football fan in your life? FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. Check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. All right, great stuff there, Nick. It's time to take a look at this week's opponent and just do some free agency window shopping slash window scouting here. Now, there's a handful of guys that are up for contract in Detroit. I don't think I'm going to go through every single one of them, but at least go through a few that I think we can have some conversations around. So again, uh, let me know of this player. If you would just stay away from completely consider them. Uh, if the price is right, or would you just back up the brink? I don't think there's any of those, but you can definitely prove me wrong. And again, Remember, not every free agency pickup you're going to get is going to be a big money guy that's going to end up being like, you know, a hopeful perennial, like all pro here in the team. You have to fill depth roster spots in this Bears team is going to have a lot of turnover. So uh, with that, first player on the list this week is defensive tackle Isaiah Bugs. So he's 26 years old. He signed with the Lions late this summer, like literally late July. And he's become like one of their best defensive linemen, especially against the run in the second half of this season after a pretty slow start. I mean, if you want to look at like one game in particular, let's look at like when the Lions beat the Vikings. And that one game, he had five pressures, one sack, two hits, two hurries, which I swear to God is more than this Bears team gets as an entire unit sometimes per week. And uh, he's also led all interior defensive linemen uh, with at least nine. Uh, so all of those categories led all interior defensive linemen that week in the entire league so just a small snippet uh of bugs but is he someone that the bears can potentially look into if he doesn't resign to detroit obviously for like a low end uh kind of guy for a cost he's someone that wouldn't uh, offend me if they want to like hey come in and training camp earn a roster spot great but i don't know exactly what a market value would be they didn't have any of that but any thoughts on bugs 
Yeah, former six round draft pick um, out of Mississippi Gulf Coast. You, you don't hear a lot of uh, you know those no. guys being drafted, but you know, being uh, that the Bears defensive line can almost use anybody mm-hmm. right now, and like you're benching Angelo Blackson or healthy scratch, so other guys can, and they don't have a lot of depth there. So, I mean, it's not like you said, well, not the splash free agent signing but maybe a depth piece. So at this point, you, you have to consider it. We have to raise the floor. I mean, that's not only do the Bears need better top-end talent in the trenches, they have to raise that floor and limit that drop-off. What are your thoughts, Greg? Yeah, I mean, beggars can't be choosers for the Bears. They have maybe six pieces on the front seven. Maybe Jack Sanborn is the only one on the front seven that you can say is going to be a, a big contributor to next season's uh, defense. So, you know, is he a day one free agent signing? Maybe not, but depending on which way you maneuver through free agency in those first couple days, he may some, be somebody that comes along in that next wave or the third wave before you get to uh, the draft. So if he's somebody that has contributed in a positive way on defense for any team, <laughs> I'm gonna. the answer is going to be yes, because it's almost impossible for them to be worse than what we have going on here in Chicago when you consider the leading sack getter for the Chicago Bears is a safety. Yeah, we'll talk about him soon. Uh, So next up on my list, defensive end. Uh, Hey, look at that, an edge rusher. John Kaminsky, he's 27 years old. This season so far, 35 total pressures, three sacks, seven quarterback hits, 25 quarterback hurries, and 12 run stops. That is double the amount of pressures of al Qudi Muhammad, and three times the amount of sacks of Muhammad, too. Ten more hurries, six more hits. Just want to at least give you some reference point here to kind of utilize. Uh, run defense, roughly the same between those two players. Uh, on the Lions, he is pretty much second in all pass rush categories behind a- Aiden Hutchinson. No surprise there who's number one on the team. And again, not bad for a guy that they literally claimed off waivers this year and earned a roster spot in training camp. So very similar to Bugs. Uh, you guys may just have similar thoughts, but again, beggars can't be choosers and having veteran edge rushers that you can rely on to maybe play a role or at least give you better starting quality. I'm not going to sneeze at. No, and, and they shouldn't. Um, again, like a guy that's been somewhat productive at, with the Detroit Lions as of now, but it was a former fourth round draft pick. I'm seeing it for Atlanta. Um like it's so disappointing to kind of go back to what the bears don't have at defensive end that we haven't seen Travis Gibson take advantage of Robert oh. Quinn being, being traded away or look, Dominic Robinson still has some time being a fifth round draft pick, but we just haven't seen it. And that's getting as it, the season is slowly approaching its end here with the final two games. You would have just wish you would have seen one of those guys at least show you something, but now a John Kaminsky can come in here and we're, you know, entertaining the idea. But yeah, like again, to your first, you know, the first player that was mentioned, because he plays defensive line, because he's actually been productive, he should be in consideration because that's how bad the Bears went. Yep. I'm in the same, I'm literally, it's verbatim. Okay. The copy exact paste. same answer as the first one. Beggars cannot be choosers when it comes to the Chicago Bears front seven. Talking secondary, that's a different story. We got some good players here, but when you're talking about that front seven, we all options should be on the table. Well, I'll throw you a secondary player. You brought him up, Will Harris. So he's 27 years old. He's allowed 71% of the targets thrown his way to be caught. So that's 53 targets, 38 catches surrendered this year, two PBUs, one interception. He's only allowed two touchdowns this year, uh, which I think is pretty impressive. Uh, quarterback rating when targeting is uh, 104.2. So he's a 2019 third round pick out of Boston College. So if Ryan Poles is, you know, wanting to dip into his alma mater, maybe this is a guy, but he also was the highest drafted defensive back in school history. Will Harris was out of BC, but uh, I know we have a very young secondary outside of Eddie Jackson, but would the Bears be benefiting themselves by looking at adding a veteran corner into this room? Thoughts and I'll go to Greg first. Yeah, I'm not. I I, I don't think we should be paying for a corner. Um, if we're going to pay any corner, it should be Jalen Johnson. 
Uh, you know, his contract is due here soon. Um, if you want to draft a cornerback, that's fine. Get him on his rookie contract. You don't know whether or not you'll be able to re-sign Jalen Johnson. I can roll with that kind of philosophy. As I said, um, Witherspoon from Illinois was certainly that had, was someone that had my ears up, but, you know, depending on where our priority level is mm-hmm. for holes needing to be filled, he may not be a priority in the late second round, which is, I think, where he'll end up around maybe third. Uh, so as far as Will Harris or other secondary guys in free agency, I just don't want to pay them because I don't know what the market will be on them. And we have money to eventually pay Jalen Johnson because I hope they keep him. I, I like Jalen Johnson and I like what I've seen from this secondary across the board. Uh, I, that is the, you know, everybody talks about Justin Fields being the bright spot, but uh, the secondary has been very good. So Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Blackwell and Jalen Jones, some young guys that are hungry out there. And then you've got, you know, Kyler Gordon, who, you know, we're going to talk about soon and and Jalen Johnson and and Eddie Jackson and Jaquan Brisker. So uh, no room for Will Harris, unfortunately. Nick, are you just in the same boat? Because if so, I have another name I'm going to throw your way. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Who, who do you got? Will? Well, let's talk some receiver. Big name one right now. Only 26 years old. Uh, he's six foot four, 198. Former second round pick in 2018. You may know who I'm talking about, uh, but that's the often injured DJ Shark. He's only played nine games so far this year. He missed weeks four through 10. Still three touchdowns in Detroit. He's caught 11 of his 15 targets since week 12. Uh, if you want to look since that time span, his 15 targets is 43rd of all wide receivers. Uh, but his 222 receiving yards ranks 15th and his 20.2 yards per catch is the sixth most. So if you're looking for like a downfield threat for Justin shark could fit that bill. He's caught five of his seven contested catch opportunities too, since week 12. Uh, but again, I think injuries is a big concern here, at least for me looking at throughout his, like his uh, career trajectory. But Nick, what about you? Would DJ shark be someone the Bears should at least look into if he hits the market? I think you, you, you look into him, right? But I mean, the previous off season, right? This is a guy that, you know, bears fans that we were like, Hey, why didn't they at least make that move when, you know, line signed right. to the one year deal, but the, the health, the inability to stay on the field. I mean, that doesn't help Justin Fields if he's not available. Right. And a lot of his receivers this season haven't been available, but he is a pass catcher. He does. I still think have potential, but Obviously, and injuries are very um, unpredictable, right? You just don't know what's going to happen, but you can follow someone's history, and DJ Chark hasn't been able to stay on the field. I think they look at him, though. I think they w- you should at least consider it because you need to add weapons and just elevate the floor. Like you were just kind of talking about, Will, elevating the floor with um, you know defensive line. Re- I think you should want to do that with your wide receivers. Does Chark do that? I think from a talent perspective, yes. Just availability. I have no idea with him right exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that was that was my <laughs> that was my speechless moment. Almost. I mean, I just figured I did the first secondary guy. He does the second. Greg, shut up. We move to the next guy. That that was where my my thought process was. That's cool. So no, I don't have anyone else. Here, though. It always happens here, though, Greg. It's I don't know if it's like this trio here, like that that kind of causes the, the slight pause. You but... guys bring the best out of me. And, That's and funny. Mark and Adam bring the worst out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, there are a few other guys I was going to bring up, like linebacker Alex Anzalone, who uh, second year in his team. He's had 110 okay. tackles this year. If you're looking for someone like next to Jack Sanborn without needing to tap into the draft, Again, maybe, but he's someone that's been very vocal about wanting to come back, so I didn't want to mention uh, interior offensive lineman Evan Brown. He's 26. He's had good starting production as a center, but not this season. And then Jamal Williams, of course, is set to hit the market to uh, a big name, leading the league with 14 rushing touchdowns. But didn't think the Bears would really entertain many of these, let alone maybe you guys. But, Nick, what are you thinking? Uh, can we just get a Monroe St. Brown? Just yeah, kind of take him from the wide receiver core, mm. lug him into the Bears. Somehow, we can like just stay. switch him with his brother and see if they don't notice. Yeah, like I mean, they have they the don't same even have name. to change the jersey. No. You can just take yeah. his exactly. brothers. We'll t- he is, you know, 
I think that's yeah. a good strategy. And Jamal Williams does stand out a little bit, right? I mean, well, he's a standout, but will the Bears spend money on him? Yeah, because he's probably as thing. great a year as he's had. He's going to probably demand more money than maybe David Montgomery. But if you're thinking David won't be here next year, and there's some that even think they may upgrade at the running back position with a Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley has been thrown around there. So, you know, I think that's an interesting one. You know, uh, everybody keeps going to, you know, wide receiver. And we have Khalil Herbert, who's played well when he's given the opportunity. But, you know, I don't think running back is necessarily completely off the table, depending on what the market is for one of those guys. I mean, heck, Williams has been a Packer. Then now he's a Lion. So if he wants to continue his tour around the NFC North, and he is a good pass catcher out of the backfield, his numbers wouldn't look like it this year, but that's because they kind of moved him into a more traditional every down running back role instead of like that scat back guy because he was catching like 30, 40 catches a year. And then this year that's kind of went down as his running production has gone way up so that's it for our free agency window scouting segment and to kind of end today's show i just have like three big questions about this young bears secondary and i'm going to begin with the headline of tonight's podcast which is will kyler gordon develop into a top cornerback in 2023 Uh, he's had back-to-back weeks with the interception also a fumble recovery when you watch him you can tell that the game's slowing down a bit playing with more instincts, conviction in time uh, of his decisions, and just kind of having a better feel uh, for the game. Now, he's still allowing a very high completion percentage, uh, 88.9% over the last two weeks, 75% on the year. That still needs to be cleaned up for me, but still the ball production and some of those impact plays that he's been around and a part of and making himself gets me excited about what those next steps can look like with another off season to kind of just get in even more familiar with this defense. So what are you guys' thoughts about Gordon developing into a potential top corner in 2023? I think it's very possible. Um, you know, I mean, there, he's somebody they went after a lot early in the year, tested in a lot of different ways. I think I remember Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers going at him in the pass and the run game. Uh, learned a lot with trial and error you know, playing instead of sitting and watching from the sideline. And, you know, it. he's developed into a very good corner. And you just talk about the secondary overall, and I know we'll talk about a few of these guys, but they all deserve a hell of a lot of credit for a pass rush that does not get home. Yep. And for these guys to develop into what they've already developed into, if they get a couple guys on the defensive line and fill some of these holes on the front seven and can get to the damn quarterback, and, and make a guy, a quarterback, get the ball out of his hands a little quicker, that's where they can start stop playing prevent and mm-hmm. hang on for dear life defense and start attacking a little more. That's where a guy like Eddie Jackson has shined. That's where any secondary guy is going to shine, is when you, the quarterback is under duress and making faster decisions, and now your corners can bait them and, and get them into uncomfortable situations. So I think the sky is the limit for Kyler Gordon next year. And he's going to get a lot of opportunities because if Jalen Johnson is here again, which he's going to be, they don't go. I I mean, the statistics have shown they don't go to his side of the ball that often. Uh, And so that means Kyler is going to be the one they choose in certain one-on-one matchups. And, you know, as he's gotten better here at the end of the year, I think that's a testament to his development. The coach is developing him and his, you know, ceiling of his potential. And I think it's interesting, too, because this past week, uh, and again, I didn't watch every single snap, but I felt like I noticed it. And then PFF backed it up like he primarily played outside uh, Mm -hmm. on on Saturday. So for him to be a guy who's bounced in and out for him to make a few plays like he did uh, against Eagles and then have a game that's a little bit atypical for him, but still playing good coverage, still making plays despite not playing inside, which is where the Bears have kind of like, you know, forced him into instead of Blackwell really playing some of those snaps. I think it's another just great sign that no matter if he ends up as a slot guy or an outside player, he can be an impactful guy in this Bears secondary. Uh, Nick, what are your thoughts? Yeah, real quickly, Iberflus actually talked about Kyler Gordon and you know his ability to be flexible, playing the inside, playing the outside. And he said, I think it's great experience for him now that we put a couple corners on IR. For me, it's really good. It's going to expand him a little bit more. You saw the outstanding interception he had. On Saturday, he's going to have to use a different skill set out there. 
So I think to me, it's just going to help him grow. He's got high energy. He's really good at his fundamentals, his techniques. He's getting better there. And he's a ball hawk guy. So that's why we brought him here. So he's proven that and he's exciting to watch. And I'm excited about the last two games for him. And I think when we think of top corners in this league, how they get recognized, unfortunately, is ball production, right? Those interceptions, Mm -hmm. something that uh, Jalen Johnson hasn't really shown yet, but we know he's a good corner. He just doesn't get recognized maybe for the accolades of a pro bowl or things like that. So I do think he's capable of it because he shows a natural fit of what he can do of how to get in the right spot, the right time to pick off guys like Jalen hurts, Josh Allen, back to back weeks. And he's playing outside last week. Like you mentioned, well, primarily outside the week before that it was more at at that slot. So again, showing different skill sets is only going to help him grow as a, a full, you know, corner in this league. And again, the reference to guys that are recognized for pro bowls in the NFC, Darius Slay, Trevon Diggs, Tariq Woolen, who is a rookie, a fifth round draft pick. And obviously he's done some really good things for um, Seattle. And then Jair Alexander with the green Bay Packers. So guys that do, you don't get a lot of ball production interceptions. If Kyler Gordon keeps doing that in year two, then yeah, I don't see why he he won't be recognized as one of the top upcoming corners in this league. And those interceptions are definitely going to help him get recognized from everybody outside of Chicago that maybe don't really tune in and watch the Bears play on a weekly basis. And I was a little nervous about him being interchanged. Like, just stick him in one spot so he can learn that. But the fact that he's grown being switched back and forth, like you guys are mentioning, speaks to his talent level and how much of a – weapon he is for Matt Eberflus and Alan Williams in this defense. And if they can find another guy like that, that's interchangeable. Cause the other thing that happens throughout every week and every game in this season are injuries. So if you have guys that are interchangeable, something happens, you're not going to have that much of a fall off. If you can mix and match with guys that can play different positions. So you have one guy in that and uh, you know, maybe they can bring in another guy or maybe some of these other guys we're going to talk about are candidates to be those kind of interchangeable pieces. And real quickly, you guys, like in the league, like you see what – remember what the, the Packers did with Devontae Adams to get Jalen Johnson off him. Put him in the slot. Get him out of there. And that was, you know, a way for offenses to get their best corner off the guy. But if you have an interchangeable player like a Kyler Gordon, it's a lot tougher to do a lot of those things. You Stephon can run, Diggs but you can't his, hide. Exactly. <laughs> and Stephon Diggs didn't have his first target in that Buffalo Bills game until the third quarter. That's a testament to what – you know, Kyler Gordon was doing on the outside when he was lined up on some of those snaps. Sometimes it was Jalen Jones, but you find another interchangeable guy, which there, you know, that's not easy, but if you can, it makes you a lot more flexible as a defense and getting your best players still on the opposing players, best receivers. Exactly. It allows you to kind of cater your skill set to your matchup to give you the most advantageous positioning. Love it, Nick. What about Jaquan Brisker? Obviously, he, Greg, you mentioned he's leading the team in sacks. Crazy. Uh, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, one interception this year, five tackles for a loss. He's only allowing a completion percentage when targeted at 57%, which is really strong for a safety. Heck, any safety, let alone a rookie safety. And he has the second most tackles this season on, among rookie safeties. And we talked about Kyler Gordon's versatility. I think Jaquan Brisker needs to be applauded for some of his too, because he says he plays like a little bit of a different game than you see from a lot of safeties. He's actually played this season, 130 snaps off tackle defensive lines. Like when he's pretty much like almost like an extra edge rusher, yeah. that's, 30 more than any other safety in the NFL this year uh, in that alignment. And he's also played corner. So like an actual true corner, which Nick, that's something that we talked about. And we noticed at training camp a lot when they would drop him down to be like an actual corner. He has the fourth most snaps of all safeties playing like a true cornerback set. So he's not a box safety per se. He is very versatile in his own right, but for him to take a leap next season to become one of those like top safeties in the league, kind of like with Gordon, what do you want to see him to work on? I mean, Jaquan Brisker has shown you so much versatility. You know what? I think this last game against the Bills kind of sh- tells me what I think he still needs to work on. A lot of that stuff was gap integrity, and the first touchdown run that happened, you know, Iberflus kind of called out, you know, Jaquan Brisker saying, like, that's kind of where he needs to be, coming right. filling down that gap. So it's just recognizing things. And what's going to help him be 
be better at that is just playing experience, seeing different offenses, how they're motioning things, how they're opening up, opening up these gaps and where he needs to be. And once he recognizes that and plays with the instinctual just traits that he has, you know, Jaquan Brewster is going to be just fine because mm. he has all those instincts uh, we've already seen. And Nicholas Morrow was asked today, like, does he have linebacker tendencies? And he kind of pushed back on that. He's like, no, he, I wouldn't say he has linebacker tendencies because you see the interception he made against uh, right, the well. Patriots. Like, no linebacker in the league's making that play, but he's also coming downhill. It can hit you like a linebacker. So he didn't say he quite had linebacker tendencies, but he knows how to play in that space. And that's what makes him such a, a unique player. But once he recognizes how to fill you know, these certain gaps and hopefully he has better players up front playing with him that right. can help make his job a little easier – then then you're really going to see Jaquan Brisker become quote unquote unlocked because he's already been used in a bunch of different ways. But once he gets that down, you know, Jaquan Brisker leading the team in tackles like, you know, up there with Jack Sanborn, that's not going to surprise me because he's that capable of a player. And he's a sound tackler. But that's going to be the thing for me when he's still developing, obviously, this being his rookie season that I want to see him work on just knowing exactly where you need to be. And once he figures that out, you know he's going to do it at 110% and be just fine. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, what's the number one – one of the number one things we hear Matt Eberflus say, alignment and assignment. And that is what Nick's saying, you know, gap integrity, understanding where he needs to be, you know, on the on run or pass, uh, specifically some of the runs. I mean, you see the Jalen Hurts, you know, alleyway up the middle, you know, for the touchdown – and that was just about them not stunting, you know, with the safety and the D tackle. And it just opened up a gap, wide open lane. You know, it was uh, like like parting the Red Sea, you know, and Jalen Hurts just walked in. And those are the little things he'll learn with experience of playing. But I already think he's the best safety in this draft, personally. Uh, because just the way he's played – and when you also consider the defense around him, specifically the pass rush, as we mentioned with Kyler Gordon, to excel the way he has while this defense isn't, you know, nearly filled out like a normal NFL roster is. You know, uh, before we had our answer on Jack Sanborn, it was the whole front seven, you know, that you were concerned about. So, you know, to me, his physicality at the point of attack and – his ability to, you know, implement the peanut punch when it's, when everyone's starting to scrum up. I love that, you know, mindset he has. I know he talked to peanut Tillman at one point, so maybe he made an impression there. And as you mentioned, that interception against new England showed this ceiling that he has, which is extremely high. I think Eddie Jackson and, and um, Jaquan Brisker could be one of our favorite safety tandems ever sandy safety duos ever we've had with the bears and that's we've been waiting for that right i mean mm-hmm. for years we were waiting for you know two we'd always have one but we'd never have two and then when adrian amos and eddie jackson had a great year in 2018 it was like finally we got two guys that are solid these two guys are to me more than just solid they can be great and so i think even more so than kyler gordon I think Jaquan Brisker could become one of the top safeties in the league and have Pro Bowl caliber season next year. 100%. Awesome. I'm excited for next year already. Let's uh, fast forward. No, I'm kidding. We have a lot to get oh, through. No, I'm ready to fast begin. forward too. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I'm excited just to get to the offseason. One final question. So you talked about it, Greg. Like You don't want to see the Bears spend a lot of money in the secondary because of priorities and – They're a good young unit. So maybe the Bears don't have to even draft someone. Maybe that next starter out uh, in terms of you have what? You have Eddie Jackson and Brisker on the back end, Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon. Maybe that next starter at corner is already on the team. We've seen a lot of good plays from uh, Blackwell and Jalen Jones, and I dug up some stats. So since week 12, and that's when these guys started playing a little bit more. Blackwell has allowed the third lowest passer rating of all rookie corners at a 66.7 and the fifth lowest completion rate at 50. And when you look at the all the corners in the league, that ranks 14th and 18th best. So that's pretty damn good. Very impressive. 
Jalen Jones on that same span has allowed 55.6% completion percentage at targets thrown his way and a pass rating of 82.2. And then both of them have allowed pass ratings less than 70 over the last two weeks and only 50% uh, passes being completed. And for those listening, like why are we entertaining a couple of undrafted free agents potentially stepping into a starting role next season and having confidence that they can go ahead and kind of copy and paste what we've seen over the last few weeks into a longer kind of stable spot. Well, let's just don't forget about Bryce Callahan. He's a prime example of an undrafted free agent that came to Chicago and was able to really ball out. And heck, he's still doing that here too. I know injuries have been his concern, uh, but still like you can roll with potentially one of these guys. I just wanted to know, what are the chances of one of these guys, either or Blackwell or Jalen Jones, earning a starting spot next season? Here, real quickly, to add on to the Bryce Callahan like comparison, Iberflus has already seen this. He's already had a very a very valuable player in his defense before, and Kenny Moore, an undrafted cornerback, ascend to be one of the top corners in the league, and he saw that firsthand in, in Indianapolis. Like it can happen. So and look, I'm not putting that pressure on like a Jalen Jones or a Josh Beckwell to be that guy, but he knows what it kind of looks like initially. Like if these guys start playing well, even though they don't, they're not drafted, uh, you know, in in within the one, seven rounds, like they could still be quality players. So to say that you know these guys could be starters for next year, they definitely can be. And it doesn't mean that you don't draft somebody else later in the in the draft to also add competition to that position, but. If anybody has a good indication of what an undrafted corner can do, it's Matt Eberflus, and he knows the importance of that nickel position or just a cornerback group in general, how important it can be. And if Josh Blackwell, Jalen Jones happen to be that guy, Eberflus is going to be probably the first one to know about it. Yeah. Hey, come on. Just hold on real quickly. We're going back to Nick. Stick your neck out. Give me a percentage, zero to 100%, that one of these two <laughs> ends up a week one starter. Is it 50%, 40, 60, 70, 80? Come on. Throw a number my way. Uh, we'll go with, I'll go 65%. That one. All of right. Them. One of them's a start. Exactly. I'm you have two guys. 100%. Here, so <laughs> Damn. I'll go full meatball here. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I got I got a lot of respect for both these guys. Josh Blackwell has been a standout in special teams all season long. Yes. And then when he finally gets his opportunity against Green Bay, he balled out. And I just loved the energy he brought. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't afraid of the moment. And they always say, when you get your chance, you know, you're, when your opportunity comes in professional sports or college, no matter the sport, basketball, football, college, baseball, professional, whatever, you got to take it. And you got to be ready to play. And that's the other thing that I think people underestimate, you know, being a backup, never getting your opportunity all year, and then coming in the way Josh Blackwell did and seizing that opportunity shows the caliber. And we saw that, like you said, with with uh, corners that have came up through the ranks here with the Bears in the past. When a guy stands out like that and takes their opportunity, uh, DJ Moore, when he came from uh, – you know, Jay oh, Cutler's yeah. uh I was a big DJ Moore guy. Um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, where did he come from? Um t- at Na- Nashville. Um Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Um, when he got his opportunity, you could see that energy. It kind of reminded me of the way Jalen Jones and Josh Blackwell came in. Uh Bryce Callahan, same thing. You know, so to me, you know, both Jalen Jones got destroyed early in the season against Minnesota. Yep. And J- they had him on Justin Jefferson. They're playing zone coverage and they're allowing Justin Jefferson to do whatever he wants. He's making Jalen Jones look foolish out there. And he's stuck in there just as much of a credit as I'm giving Josh Blackwell for seizing his opportunity when it finally came. You also have to give Jalen Jones credit for not hanging his head from the early mm-hmm. season failures and continuing to play well. And again, and I've said this with each player that we've talked about here in the secondary and they've been our, shining star right behind Justin Fields as a whole group. I am going to bring it up again with these guys. You bring up more from Indianapolis shining with Indianapolis. Well, they had a great defense all around and it makes guys like that stand out even more for anybody on this defense to be standing out at this point in the season with all the trades and injuries that have occurred to me is 
a tell for what they're capable of when you put a proper defensive line with this team. Maybe get one more linebacker. Certainly the defensive line. So to me, those guys absolutely have a chance. I'm a little more, you know, uh, intrigued by Josh Blackwell because I've seen more mm-hmm. positives from him from special teams. So I know the energy he brings, but I think both guys are going to be coming into training camp next year with their hair on fire. And that's going to be something that I'll definitely be keeping an eye on those one-on-one battles. When we get to Hallis hall next year, are going to be a lot of fun. I think outside of the Minnesota game, I was just pulling up Jalen Jones's uh, weekly reports and I was trying to do a quick math in my head. Roughly. I may have missed math. I may have pulled a Nick here, but I think he's caught uh, <laughs> about 14 <laughs> catches on the other 23 targets for only 200. Sorry. 145 ish or so yards rough math, but it ain't bad for the rest of the season from Jalen Jones. If you just take out that Minnesota game and I know the numbers are what they are. Everyone played that Minnesota game, but if you go back and look, everybody in that Minnesota game got torched. It wasn't just Jalen Jones. It was everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and we got Kyle Waddle asking, I would still like to see them draft a cornerback in later rounds. If Devin Witherspoon is there in the third round, take him. Maybe second round because we're right now we only have one second round pick. That's too high when you consider the other positions of need. But at the same time, as we mentioned, Jalen Johnson, we may not be able to re-sign him. So if you have a guy developing that you don't necessarily have to rely on to come out and be a first day contributor, that is absolutely something I'm all in for. So um, but that secondary is a bright spot. Um, and that's something that they can build off of with Matt Eberflus and Alan Williams in this defense. So thank God for that, because it can't just be Justin Fields. They have a lot of holes to fill yeah. and you got to be able to start somewhere. So at least on both sides of the ball, you have a starting point, Justin Fields on offense, the secondary on defense, and you can work your way out from there. And that's, a, that's a really good thing. I mean, I saw Dan Weeders tweet got a lot of attention today about yeah. You know, hey, well, he's a lightning rod and Bears fan. He gets Bears fans riled up, and we get it. As fans, we understand they have a lot of holes to fill. But you, you, to me, if you just focus on the positives and understand they have a lot of opportunity this offseason, they don't have to fill 100% of the holes they have. Nope. They, they, they can fill half of the holes they have and still – have a shot to be competitive next year. You get two pass rushers in here and the rest of the guys are just fillers. That's going to be 50, 500% better than what we're doing uh, as a pass rush as a whole this year. And it, when you start to, it's a trickle down effect. One guy affects the guy next to you. So, you know, while I understand people that want to temper expectations, there was a lot of people trying to do that going into this season. And some of us, got a little too excited. And that's what we do as fans. You and Will got excited. Adam Hogue picked him for nine wins. Corey Wooten was big on some different things. So it happens from fans to the experts, to former players. We love the bears and we want to see the best in what they can do. But at the same time, there is a road to being competitive next year. No one's saying they're going to win a Super Bowl, but there's no doubt that they can be competitive just by filling some of the holes they have this year, but or this offseason, Ryan Poles has you know a lot at his disposal, but it's a big job to take. Uh, I see a comment that was starred from Love Dave about Tevin Jenkins. He wanted to know if there was any update. I figured, Nick, if you didn't bring anything up, that meant there wasn't an update worthy enough for today's show. But since the question was asked, I do want to at least make sure we get clarification. Yeah, Eberflus was asked about like all the guys that were were missing, like Claypool, Jenkins. If they were, if he was optimistic, and he said we'll kind of just wait till the injury reports come out. So that's why. I, well, I did see that from Love Day, but yeah, nothing, nothing new uh, for the updates on a lot of the players that didn't play on Saturday. And then uh, he did have another question I liked about if the Bears did get the first pick in the draft, like what percentage would we give it for that pick to be traded? Like, so the Bears, if they got number one, the percent that they would trade it down, I almost say 100, even though I know nothing for certain. But like, I feel like if the Bears had the number one overall pick, like they're moving it, like someone's going to trade up for that pick. Jump Houston, I know he has like who else would. There's other quarterback needy teams. I know the Colts are right around the corner. Uh, but at least for me, like, I don't think the Bears would 
select if that number one if they had it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see you, it either. Like, are you taking Will Anderson or Jalen Carter with the number one overall pick? Like, I know guys are impact your defense, but you're gonna, you're gonna have some teams calling, and you got to entertain everything that you you hear. Entertain, but force their hand and yes. force this bidding war to get a king's ransom. And if I'm Brian Poles, I am setting a bar saying. It has to be this, and if a team doesn't meet this, we're just going to take best player available. Mm -hmm. Because I want the trade back. That was, to me, my focus of why I wanted the first or second pick and why it was so imperative. But at the same time, you don't just take a trade to take a trade. It's got to be the juice has to be worth the squeeze. And he asked what teams. I mean, just looking it over, Houston would want to jump to one if we jump them. Uh, You know, Seattle, I mean – I don't know how much they believe in Geno. Geno. Every team will be on the board that needs a quarterback. Arizona could potentially, you don't know with a coaching switch, how much they believe in Kyler Murray. Maybe not. Indianapolis, Atlanta, the Lions, Carolina, you know, Vegas as, you know, there's word yeah. about Derek Carr could come or go. I mean, it just, it's going, it could keep going and going and going. There's so many teams yeah, the Jets, what are they doing out there with Zach Wilson? Yeah. You know, oh just, boy, you don't know. I mean, so there's a lot of teams. Tampa Bay is Tom Brady retiring or forcing his way to San Francisco. We don't know, but there's a lot. It it just opens up so many opportunities, even from one to two. Um, it does. It's 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 so. I'm gonna be living on the edge of my seat here these last two weeks. Hey, we got something to watch for, something to root for. And, you know, the day after Christmas uh, with the Bears season going exactly how it has, that gives us something. And I'm going to hang our heads uh, on that one. And you're right, Greg. And really, between now and the draft, like, teams are going to talk themselves into, like, we need a quarterback. They're going to talk themselves into one of these guys being that generational talent that can save their franchise. Like it happens every single year. It doesn't matter if it's a weak quarterback draft class or not. So holding that first pick would be tremendous for the bears and the weak quarterback drive. I mean, the, the t- t- eight, 10 teams had their chance at Justin Fields and two teams took Trey Lance and talked themselves into Trey Lance and Zach Wilson over Justin Fields. And then the rest of the teams are taken like cornerback. One of which yep. is Denver who now just fired Nathaniel Hackett and paid uh, King's ransom for Russell Wilson. So teams are quarterback desperate and there's a lot of, you know, teams that are, that, that need it. It the quarterback a few years ago looked like it was like the golden era of quarterbacks. And now all of a sudden it doesn't look that way there. There's a lot of bad quarterback play around the NFL. So they'll be talking, they they for sure going to be talking themselves into Bryce mm-hmm. Young from Alabama. And then we have to root like hell for CJ Stroud to win the national championship and let his stock just go insane. Now you've got two guys and all these teams in a bidding war. It could really become a perfect storm for the Chicago Bears. 100%. Uh, Nick says we have a super chat that came in. I, I wouldn't it. call it. It's prob- it, super chat. My, this might be, I mean, we appreciate anyone's support on this show, but uh, we are 100% sure that Justin Fields is our quarterback. Yes. Uh, and and this, yes. this person, I think, is the same person that's brought up Sean Payton over and they over. They love themselves some Sean Payton. I love the idea of him, too, at one point, but, it, you know, no, they're not firing Matt Eberflus. I'm so not starting not. over. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's the culture. He's building up the culture. And I know a lot of people just throw that out the window, but no Sean Payton. I think it's meaningful. Justin Fields is a guy. Let's let's just roll with that into 2023 and not entertain anything else. I uh watched Hoosiers with AJ last night, and hey. They didn't have early success early on once he mm-hmm. took over coaching. Everyone <laughs> wanted him out of the town. And then things clicked once he got the final piece of the puzzle and, and everyone bought in. So culture is important. The, they're missing the alcoholic coach on the sidelines. And that's what I can <laughs> I could provide that. There you go. For the Chicago Bears, the angry drunk on the sidelines played by 
uh, Dennis Hopkins, right? Yep. Yep. And then you can bring out really good analysis and then stumble in drunk and get ejected like a week later. Very unstable. Hey, um, they don't give Justin Fields these late hit calls. I will be stumbling you will. out there and get thrown out of the game. <laughs> Honestly, that would be a uh, priceless television. But I'm going to call this an episode here for tonight. Guys, great stuff here on the After Dark. Had a lot of fun with both of you talking some Chicago Bears here to kind of kick off our week. Well, the end of the first day of the week. It's hard to explain, but you all know what I mean. Uh, please make sure to rate, review our show on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate it. And of course, uh, if you haven't yet, head over to allcshow.com slash diehard and just become a diehard. There's so many great benefits. 20% off all merch all the time. 20% off all of our events, including tailgates, takeovers, uh, and so much more. You get some uh, exclusive diehard only merchandise uh, that we offer. And like I said, so much more. Head over to our website. It breaks it down on all of the details, but that's going to do it for us here tonight. For Cody, Greg, and Nick, I'm Will DeWitt signing off, and I'll see you later this week. And, of course, bear down, Chicago.